What's happening, Feast and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Tonight we're talking about worms. Big worms. It's that blackberry old monster, one of my favorites, 10 and a half inches. Curly tail worms. You gotta tell me you fished an old fat Albert before. Straight tail worms. Happens to be the best color zoom trick worm color ever made. I can't get too close and share that secret. Heck, even little tiny finesse worms like these guys, a little Senko or a plasma tail. Yes, tonight we're taking a trip down memory lane to learn more things like why do they call it a Texas rigged worm or heck, who even created the first soft plastic worm? Admittedly, I'm a tackle nerd and I have a true appreciation for learning the who, what, when, where behind. Baits, you know, where did they come from? Where did they start? Companies, techniques, all that. I was reading an article on Bassmaster.com from a gentleman named Louis Stout, and the article was simply called The Worm. Now, it was an article from back in 2008, but after I got done reading it, I'm like, man, there is no way we can't do a segment and talk about this. So, like a lot of you with more free time on your hands, I went down that rabbit hole, went down memory lane, and got into a bunch of this, so I thought, you know what, we're going to talk about that tonight. Now, it's fun because the article starts out by talking about Bill Dance being in the first ever bass tournament in 1967 on Beaver Lake in Arkansas. The old Bill Dance picked up his blue Texas rigged worm, and yeah, that's an oldie right there. This is a man's, we'll, we'll talk about that. But he picked up his blue Texas rigged worm, and he says he caught what was the first fish ever to be caught in a bass tournament. I think he said it was like two and a half pounds. He ended up getting second in that tournament, crediting most of that to the Texas rigged worm. But the next three out of six tournaments, I think I said, he ended up winning. If you didn't know... He didn't just have a funny shell. He used to be a stud back in the day, and I believe he worked with Strike King. Um, I guess I need to back up a step. Dan said within a couple weeks he was already getting offers, job offers from lure companies. Hey, you want to come work with us? Do you want to travel around and show people how to fish the worm? All kinds of stuff. You know, it's hard to say for sure, but the article said what I had heard too is that Cream Lures is the first company that's credited with making the first plastic or rubber worm. And that was back in 1940. What's crazy to think, lures that were started in 1940 were still using them. Bass fishing hasn't changed that much. Now, of course, the lures starting then are way different from the lures that we have now. They're way fancier and more tails and twists and action. But 1940, the worm was invented. Now, I think it said in 1949, Nick Cream, the owner of Cream Lures, uh, was credited with the first poured soft plastic lure, which is something you see now, you know, hand pouring, you know, swim baits, worms, all that's cool again. Getting away from the injection, you know, more artistic, I guess you'd say, in worm making. But anyway, those early worms, you probably remember them. If you pop open your dad or grandpa's tackle box, I think you can actually still buy them at Walmart. Those cream lures that came with like the three hook rig on them. Back in the day, that's how they used to fish them on those little pre hooked, you know, rig things with the three hooks and you just tie it to the line on there. I guarantee if you've been fishing for a while, you've seen them. But they were trying to replicate that with an artificial lure. So mimicking how they fish live worms and making a replica in the soft plastic world. Now move forward to 1950, Cream Lures noticed they were shipping a whole lot of plastics to Texas, Tyler, Texas especially. Now it was even more interesting because the anglers down there were requesting replacement lures without the hook harness, just regular worms with no hooks or anything pre-rigged. Well, through the grapevine, he found out the anglers were taking a single hook, threading it through the nose of the bait, flipping around and then taking that hook point and burying it up in the worm making it weedless. Well, soon news of this new rig spread like wildfire in Texas, especially in all those brushy, woody places in Texas to fish, and thus was born the Texas rig. Now, of course, with the success of worms and them becoming all the rage, other companies started popping up with their own lures. Take Fliptail, for example. They said they were credited with the first process of injecting soft plastic and making worms, also credited for making the first lizard, which we've all used and probably using them for bed fishing now. Cream. Cream came out with another first, and they were credited with the first scented lure, cheese. You imagine using an old cheese scented worm? Cream also introduced a special lineup of worms that had a, a different colored tail. Hmm, still do it. Not too far after that, Tom Mann came out with Mann's worms. They were one of my favorite back in the day when I was younger. With the jelly worm. This is a form of the jelly worm. It's got that old notable spade tail on there. Man, I loved these things when I was younger. I've still got a couple backs. A lot of them I had to throw out because they got all gross and melted. But, man, the jelly worm, you put that. And I fished it on a shaky head. I didn't know what it was back in the day. But I got hung up on everything and I got sick of it. And I just took a regular jig head like you'd fish a curly tail on. Bring it in there sideways and just rig that weedless like you would a worm. You know, a Texas rig, bury the hook up in the lure. And that's how I fished him. And it worked. It got bit all the time. The jelly worm. Now, what was interesting about the jelly worm is they didn't stink. And just like these old ones, they were fruity smelling. And these still smell fruity. And those are from probably 20-something years ago. Still smell fruity. And each fruit scent they had corresponded with the colors. I think when they started out, they had blue, black, red, and purple. So purple was grape. Red was strawberry. So on. So... 
the old man's lure is pretty cool. Now move forward to 1973, Glenn Carver of Mr. Twister. I've still got bags of Mr. Twister, Twister tails around here, but was credited with the first Twister tail or curly tail worm to ever be on the market. Soon after that, that led to the creation of what is one of the absolute best fish catchers, still a big worm or just you know a curly tail worm is what it was back then. But now they've got all kinds of them, six, seven. This is a 10 and a half inch. They still catch fish. Move forward to 1980. We're getting close to the birth of Debo. 1980, Gene LaRue. You've probably heard that name. He's still doing stuff. The, uh, the Biffle Bug is probably a big one you've heard of. That's a LaRue lure. But 1980, Gene LaRue started experimenting with additives to lures. First, he started with like sugar, chocolate. You think they said even Coca-Cola. Of course, none of them worked. But then they came out with his own patented salt impregnation process. So putting salt into those lures. And you look here, zoom. What's it say on there? Super salty. They're not salty because he came up with the idea first. They're salt impregnated. But that was a process that he patented back in 1980 and putting salt in lures. And of course, what we found out is it makes those drops. So instead of having a floating worm, you impregnate it with salt, put a bunch of salt in there and it sinks. It's crazy to think something back then, you know, you'd think we'd have some other way of making these sink, but no, good old salt. Now, speaking of Zoom, move forward to 1981. Zoom comes out with the first straight regular floating trick worm, just like that guy there, a straight worm, Floats, no salt in it, but this was super popular for fishing up shallow in that shallow water. Floating trick worm like this. And who did we just see in the uh, the MLF deal with a merthiolate trick worm? Oh, Mark Daniels. Still using it to this day, floating trick worms. And the other thing is they were super soft. I remember they said in that article that uh, a lot of the worms, you know, from way back in the day were like made of rubber. So they were real hard. So I think Zoom kind of came out with that real soft deal to them. Now, sticking with that Zoom theme and right around Debo's birth, 1984, they came out with the, the Brush Hog. We still use those, right? Well, they said the Brush Hog was actually developed a few years before that. They never released it. They thought, ah, this won't do anything. But there was a gentleman, I don't remember if they gave his name, um, got a prototype of it, liked it so much he was using it out there. He ordered almost like 400 bags of it. So Zoom was like, ah, maybe we should produce this nationwide. Jump forward to 1987. A company called Lunker City Specialist comes out with the first soft plastic jerk bait, the Sluggo. I had some of those, and it was like three years ago. I just threw those out. Had those in an old tackle box, and it was disgusting. It had a bunch of like scent stuff in it because I used to put that crawdad scent in my tackle box. It got all hot. It was disgusting. It smelled like a small raccoon died in that box. But, but that Sluggo actually led to the creation of soft plastic jerk baits. You know, the fluke, those kind of deals that you'd work quick, and it looks like a well, a jerk bait, but in a soft plastic form. So the predecessor to the uh, the soft plastic Zoom fluke, the old Sluggo. Now hop up into the 90s. I was a 90 kid. 1997, Gary Yamamoto comes out with what is probably still arguably one of the best fish catching lures ever produced, the Yamamoto Senko. Now this is a yum dinger, but the Yamamoto Senko, can you imagine if he would have never come up with that? And the story goes that he was sitting with his pad and paper, drawing up stuff, trying to figure out what the next, you know, worm type was going to be to create. And he was looking at the pin and just thought, well, can I make a worm that's in the shape of this pin? The creation of this hybrid worm, the Senko, really brought weightless soft plastic worm fishing to the forefront. Man, can you imagine if he never ever created the Senko? Would somebody have else have done it? I don't know. Who knows? These things are just proven fish catchers. They fall slow. They got that real tight shimmy and falling action. And for whatever reason, they just catch fish. They still catch fish. And thus, that crazy old stick bait craze took off. Now, one thing that made me cringe about reading that old Texas rig is they said companies and people didn't really know how to fish, and there was only a few select people that knew how to fish the Texas rig. They were keeping it quiet. And companies were actually advising people to let the bass eat the lure, get it all the way down their gullet before they set the hook and reel it in. Can you imagine going out now, Strike King saying, yeah, this is how you fish the ocho. You let every fish eat it all the way down the gullet and reel it in. Every single fish you hook on it is gut hooked, and you probably got to keep it or cut it off and destroy the population. Can you imagine now if companies were telling people that? Oh, how times have changed. All right, fishing friends, that's going to do it for tonight. I need you to comment below and let me know, do you like these type of videos? Going back and looking at the history of a bait, a lure, you know, technique, a company, whatever it is, comment below and let me know. Of course, I'm a nerd with this stuff. I have a lot of fun with it. But hey, tonight's subscribe feature friend is Mike Perez. Mike, thank you very much for watching and being a supporter. And thank you, everybody else, for watching and supporting my channel. I know times are crazy right now, but I appreciate every one of you that still watches. So that's enough for me. I got to get to editing. Thanks for watching. And until next time.